This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now sitting in the Moxus Mifa 9. And in this video, I'm going to summarize what I found out about this car after spending almost one week. Wait, is it too dark here? Let me fire up this one. Maybe that's better. Yeah, they're doing some uh, asphalt work at night now over here. But let me see. Let me just check here. Let's check exposure. I think that's, yeah, that's usually good. Okay. Wait, dude. Oh. Are you driving in the middle of the road, man? So, yeah, what should I say about the Mifa 9? It's um, it's a van. I checked the spec. It's a little bit long. What the heck, man? It's a little bit longer than a, an ID bus, but <clears throat> ID bus is taller. So, in a way, yeah, they are similar in some ways. But then price-wise, bus is almost uh, 10,000 euros cheaper than this one. But you saw the seats in the back. You know, that's the party trick here. Um, and then, yeah, but then this one is front wheel drive and then bus is rear wheel drive, but does that matter? Nah, probably not. But, but, okay, so we're looking for then some kind of van people carrier, MPV, MVP, whatever you call these cars. So, um, if I compare the, the Mifa 9 versus uh, bus, then they are actually similar in range because uh, this one has 90 kilowatt hour battery well at least i measured around 84 kilowatt hour net capacity but that's almost 10 kilowatt hour more than uh, uh, bus but then bus is only five seater for now yeah there is a long version of bus coming out so, uh, man there's so many mid lane huggers here so um yeah i'll just uh, stay on my lane as long as i don't change lane then this is actually not illegal yeah but okay so um, yeah, they are similar in some ways. This one versus bus. Space-wise, yeah, kind of depends how you measure it, but space-wise should also be similar, but then in the banana box test, bus takes more, okay. Um, but the Mifa 9 is actually more, um, 
it, it, it's faster and also it's quieter than the bus you can almost hear it now at least when we're not hammering too hard but once we go faster it seems like there's some some wind noise yeah um but this navigate i mean this car does not have navigation and i people always say oh, but we only have screen mirror you can use uh, apple carplay at least or qd link which i don't know what the heck it is i tried to make it work with my android phone it doesn't work uh, but it is actually very nice to have built-in navigation because when you navigate in a modern EV, like the ID bus even, uh, well, pay attention to safe driving, okay? Man, I have to turn off that shit. Um, okay, let me enable some auto steer here. So, um, in the ID bus, you have navigation. When you navigate somewhere, you can then uh, get an estimation of how many percent you will arrive with. And also, uh, some sophisticated cars, they also have preheating of the battery before arrival to a fast charger. So there are plenty of benefits of having built-in navigation in the car, but here you don't have it. So uh, this MIFA is supposed to be some kind of, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be luxury car, but at least, uh, um, yeah. I, I'll, but I feel like uh, it might be premium, I wouldn't call it luxury, also the price doesn't reflect that it's luxury, like an EQS, for example, SUV. But but when it comes to space, okay, it beats the heck out of EQS SUV, this one, in space, because it's not an SUV, it's a van, right? Uh, but the auto stair is oh, a little bit, oh shit. <clears throat> sorry, I've been, oh shit, what the heck is that smell in front? Let me, let me just get past that fossil, oh shit. But auto stair is niche good, uh, oh man, some fossil, probably some diesel shit. Okay, let me, here, here I'll show you now. When you enable, uh, if you push the stock, well this is the, the gear, gear stock by the way. You pull it down once, you enable uh, cruise control. You pull it down twice, you enable auto steer. Hmm, where have I seen that one before? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which brand that has that mode. <laughs> okay. But, um, I mean, it's a nice ride. I've tried a couple of Muxuses, Muxi, Muxuses in the past. It was the um, Unique 5, the old one. That one, you felt like it was Chinese. It didn't have the nice ride. It was a bit bouncy. Uh, it was a bit... Uh, expensive it was just cheap materials but here i feel like you have a nice comfortable ride quiet ride lots of space um good solution on the storage here you know um so overall i mean it's an it's an okay car i wouldn't say it's outstanding but the lights by the way they are really good yeah but okay they don't beat the the id bus lights so yeah, I was compared to ID bus, but even the ID bus um, interior is a bit sparse. Here, at least you have some soft, nice feeling material. So actually, the interior, uh, if I would say the premiumness of the interior here, I feel like it's actually better than the bus. The bus is a bit hard plastic all over the place, but it's a cheaper car, right? But the bus charges faster, yeah. So that's true. But but this one, when it comes to charging. I'm sorry, I'm jumping a little bit back and forth. It actually it performs quite well. It has 120 kilowatt flat curve until 45%, and then it throttles a little bit, but overall, fairly nice and flat. And then in 1000 kilometer challenge, I did it in 11 hours and 10 minutes, which is quite good for a car like this. And also for a Chinese car, because Chinese cars uh, in general, they don't charge that fast. Uh, when it comes to efficiency, it seems to be slightly worse than ID bus, so but it is bigger, a longer, you know, thirty centimeters longer than bus. So uh, in that regard, uh, it's actually fairly okay. One thing I don't like is that it's front wheel drive, but um, it's slightly tail heavy. I measured around forty five percent, no sorry, forty nine percent front and fifty one percent rear. Normally, front-wheel drive cars they will have around 51, 52 percent front, and uh, yeah. So that's why you heard in the beginning I was provoking it. It actually s <laughs> spins a little bit, 
when uh, when the, the the traction might be not be the best um, but it allows a little bit of wheel spin that's good uh, but also sometimes you'll feel when you floor it that it tries to limit the power so yeah um, but um, you know this being a Chinese car it has its Chinese stuff uh, like bad translation all over the place uh, so <laughs> I just have to live with that but there's one thing I, I really can't live or almost can't live with which is this if I turn off the stuff now when I use the okay hang on. I didn't did say about that shit yeah I forgot system setting you have to dig into the menu here let me see monitor driving attention okay I'm gonna show you something here uh, if you start okay many times when you start the car all this assist mode intelligent speed limit assist and all that shit is enabled and then what happens then is uh, if you drive it will become almost unusable how bad the beeps are and also there's some beeps here yeah uh, it, it just it becomes really bad how, how the stuff it over sometimes over sensitive okay I set it to low but let me see if I set it to high no actually it's set to the default but sometimes it becomes so bad that you just have to turn off all that shit <laughs> let me see let me set it back here so I, I just want to turn off that shit that that's what I tend to do before I start driving I, I just turn off all this shit and I turn off the monitor there is a camera there monitoring me so turn off all that stuff so it doesn't send any data to China and now the car is actually fairly quiet except for when you do this well I mean I, I don't know what's up with Chinese people when they design cars but uh, Ch Chinese people they might want to have that ding dong but when you uh, import uh, adapt when you try to adapt that to European uh, standards uh, I think in most uh, in most cases Europeans they don't want all that beep ding dong shit uh, so it would be great if you can turn off all that before you import it to Europe all right yeah but okay uh, what else is it Chinese car yeah the consumption now is 299 watt hour per kilometer it's capped there it doesn't dare to show you higher than 299 even though many times it is yeah when you're cruising on the motorway uh, it will be way over 299 watt hour per kilometer is that another Chinese thing and also I found a bug here uh, in the trip meter in the beginning it tends to show the right uh, consumption based on the, the distance in the trip but then once the trip goes long enough it seems to then be a rolling average on the last what they were I feel like it might be around 100 kilometers so even if you're driven 1000 kilometers for example it will only take the consumption will not show for the last 1000 you know it will show for the last 100 kilometers something so that, that becomes a bit confusing you think oh this car is efficient now during summer right but then yeah whatever you know you don't get the idea so there are lots of stuff I can talk about with this car the bad things I will touch into some of this uh, and actually this time if uh, if Maxus, if they are interested, they can contact me. You know, they, you know how to find me, right? You can contact me. We can have a conversation. I can give you guys all the input, but I need to prepare some stuff, and that's gonna take some time. So it also gonna cost you. I'll just name the price. But I have lots of feedback to you guys if you want to improve the car to make it even better. That's my claim. Just you have just just trust me, right? I uh, I think I know what Europeans like. Uh, and if you want to sell more of these cars uh, you can get some input from me okay how about this you can contact me I can tell you what's good what's bad and then just have like a I can write like a draft or some shit and if you feel like that's waste of time and money then no no cure no pay but if you want more details we can have a little discussion and then yeah we'll see how it goes right but okay so um what else is it with this car uh, that I should talk about? Um, yeah, yeah, the, the freaking, the freaking, um, the throttle, man. Uh, okay, I need to explain now. The problem with throttle is that if you try to drive manually, like I'm doing now, I'm not using cruise control, uh, and you want to have a smooth ride, you can't. 
it's freaking impossible man because the throttle throttle response throttle tuning has been done so bad and you can even change mode you can even go into eco mode it doesn't help so the problem is that uh, when you are in region let me just accelerate a little bit here okay okay when you are regening that part is fairly smooth you can request for example a little bit of region 10% region 5% region you can get it but when you want to accelerate or apply you know positive torque not negative torque it will always jump up you can feel this little dunk, little, little, little jolt and I see on the display that the display goes up gradually but it's not gradually it's just the way it displays that's just what, how it is with Chinese cars yeah but I see that it will always apply um, seems like a minimum of 15 to 20 percent power and when this car has 245 horsepower that actually becomes a lot of horsepower just instantly uh. so I wish they could tune the throttle differently because I've tested so many cars in the past and none of them have this problem <laughs> so um, yeah and I'm not the only one complaining about this Elbilföreningen, Rune, he also tested it and he experienced the exact same thing. So, and then this was uh, when I tried it. I tried it and I tested a couple of things and then I, I went to see his test and I found out, oh, it was the same. So it wasn't like I saw his test first and then I found the same flaw afterwards. We found it individually, you know. Another sl small problem is that, again, typical with Chinese cars is that um, when you set the cruise control to the maximum it is 120 kilometers per hour that's what we have right now 120 kilometers per hour and that becomes 118 kilometers per hour GPS speed German Germans they'll be like nine that is niche schnell yeah uh, most other places it's gonna be fine most places yeah but then wait what about many places in Europe where you can cruise at 130 140 kilometers per hour what then well then you can you can do this and then you can drive manually because as, as long as you can drive as long as you drive manually you can drive way way faster supposedly this one has a top speed of 180 kilometers per hour so yeah uh, but okay I should also compare the the MIFA against other cars then um, how about uh, Hongxi the Hongxi is also um, Chinese, but it's a little bit smaller. It's that one they call it like I don't know SUV or some shit like that. The Hongxi uh, has more power. It's all-wheel drive, uh, but it's and also it feels more more premium. Like the upper premium, almost luxurious in the interior, uh, but it's also more more expensive. But it's, it's it doesn't feel like a van. It feels just like a super comfortable uh, and very quiet uh, ride in comparison. So that's an alternative or Neo ES8 also very big also considered that is, a, that is a proper SUV at least ES8 also goes fast has battery swap and if you go for a bus you can even get it lower cheaper than this but then you have to rent the battery so those are the competitors and also well I don't know um, should I compare it against EQS SUV nah, I, that one cost uh, almost like two three times more and also then that's not too fair but what about um fat e-tron no no, no I can't really. so maybe maybe vans then yeah um but then for example eqv is a lot bigger again so yeah but at least how is this car um you know it looks like a van but it's not got a minivan or shit like that i'm not sure what the heck to call it right but um it actually doesn't feel like a van when you drive it because when you drive um, when you drive the EQV or, or even the ENV 200 you can, you can feel like you know the steering wheel is you sit more upright the steering wheel is tilted more more uh, uh, slightly more uh, uh, horizontal shit like that. you know you feel like you're driving a truck but here I feel like I'm driving just a, a passenger car like a big uh, I don't know what to call it maybe, maybe some SUV so the ride is very good and uh, the, technically and the car feels good to drive you know it's um, normal operation works fairly well uh, okay in here navigation and infotainment 
has lots of room for improvement <laughs> um, but the car itself is quite good and especially in the back there you have massage and ventilated seat and those those leg leg support but there no, those two two middle seats there they are really outstanding i have never ever experienced anything like that however and you should mention the hongxi has something similar but they don't have the leg support but then uh yeah and they have just some captain chairs so they don't have th those big uh, like business class seats but the problem with those business class seats is that when you try to put a child seat there it becomes cumbersome so that's a minus so you have to consider what is important for you uh, but if you want also the queen's chair you can also get that in the in the neo es8 or el7 so but then it's only the front seat but then it's just regular seat but here i mean the back there that you know the back seats there they are just really unique in a way and yeah like you don't have to get like a like a luxury car you can actually get this one with lots of space and a pretty good comfort at least in the back so if they can just fix the the throttle response here that would be great so you, you can then have a smooth ride or if they can also try to fix the auto stay because it drives like a like a drunken teenager uh, and also slows down in the curve super annoying man like, i don't know what's up with chinese people they slow like they drive so damn slow in the curve supposedly or at least that's why the, i mean that's how the the auto stay system is set up to be so uh, no that, that is niche good okay let me just get off the highway here i'm actually coming over here i want to check out my new house so um but um but overall okay let me let me to do a little test drive now in the uh, Yesheim center let's see now so um yeah uh, okay one part of me is quite impressed of how this me uh, how how much car you get for the money i mean it's still not a poor man's car you know but but just given what it is uh, that it has a big battery it charges pretty uh, fairly fast and you have the space and the comfort and the flexibility in the back um I think it's pretty good yeah um so that's the the thing that surprises me that it was uh, it gave me a positive surprise the way the car uh, handles the daily stuff uh wifey was super impressed in the back there uh she never she never complained that i didn't have a, an even throttle like you know she she should have felt like the, 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 the douche every time i just tried to uh, I don't know, maybe she didn't want to complain because the seats were so uh, nice and comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, but one thing that disappointed me was this uh, and, and some of this stuff and the bugs and the, and the, uh, the lost in translations all over the place. Like, it doesn't have a navigation. It has fairly small screen. Uh, the, so because of the small screen, the user interface becomes clumsy. Uh, but also uh, the user interface uh, or the way they design it is super clumsy and let me check something here this is all uh, the lag and also every time i press okay it works now of course it works now when i want to demonstrate but many times i try to click on the uh, click out of the uh, the hvac settings but it just doesn't react in time so so like um how to put this like the the drive okay the driver user interface here i feel like it's a disappointment but as long as uh, you buy this car for people in the back for your family your kids uh, and as long as um, Maxus they improve some of the stuff here then i think that will be uh, good enough yeah so if you're not sure then maybe sit and wait and see if if they are willing to fix some of this shit but let me see okay so this is going to drive around now you see in roundabouts how does it handle cur okay speed bumps oh nice it, the the front doesn't go up that much so it seems to try to even out the bumps and just the way it just rides over bumps and and turn okay a little bit bold like you know it, yeah so eventually i have to do my uh, driving test or my yeah <laughs> around yesterday but but I feel like the the ride has been softened up a bit and I feel like uh, there is some premiumness here in the ride and in the noise level so so you should try it yourself I know um, I, I like it I like it a lot 
Okay, oh, mother truck. Is that Optimus coming? Let me see how is Optimus Prime is not a, a, a nose truck, right? Optimus is something like that, actually. But this is red. Yeah, Optimus. The original Optimus is red. Okay, back back to the car. So, yeah, and then um, uh, also we have 360 camera that will help us when we are backing up and shit like that. Let me see. Maybe where, where should I go now? Maybe I can go this way. Yeah, let's go this way. Okay, and also the. You see, the 360 camera pops up every time you put on the blinker. So that's actually nice to see the edges so you don't scratch the rims or shit like that because it's a big car, right? One thing I don't like is this. Uh, there is no optical mirror thing. Well, optical mirror, I said it, yeah. <laughs> but it's just a camera that is also placed a little bit silly in the back there, on the way back. So you don't get that optical look or the optical vision here. And then uh, uh, you, you can't change the viewing point easily. Like, I can usually, if it's optical, I can move my head a little bit. Or I can even see people in the back. No, you can't do that. And nowadays I'm actually borrowing an ID bus. And the ID bus has a conventional mirror. And also all the other vans I tested, they also have a conventional mirror. So I'm not sure why they have a camera, camera or should I call it a camera mirror? But I don't like it, man, because I'm usually focused far ahead and I'm focused far when I look in the mirror here or the mirror there but then suddenly when I look here my eyes I mean it, it looks double because I'm not focused on far you know so I have to refocus on close and then I, when I go here see here then I have to refocus on far again so this is a brain fuck for me man so yeah that is not, not my, <laughs> my favorite shit but uh, just, you know, uh, uh, change my mind, let's go over here. But just the way it rides over the bumps, man. Look at it, look at it. Look. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Oh, eventually this is going to be my test uh, stretch <laughs> at Yesheim. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, there are those guys also. But let me see, did I mention everything now? Just a nice little ride, just give you guys the, all the input. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, ooh. Ah. Uh, Okay, to put it this way, this is the best Muxus I have ever tried. <laughs> Does that make you feel better at least? <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, but, but, okay, but compared to, for example, EQS, there is a reason why EQS costs two, three times more because the, tr the, the comfort, the noise levels, the, the sound system also, this one is not that great, by the way. Like everything there and also th that is proper luxury in the EQS so if you really want something if you have the money of course and you buy EQS SUV for example okay it's not as big but you get that that is proper luxury so when I call this one luxury you know Chinese luxury, it, it's not really luxury. I'm just you know just trying to get the clicks it's I would I would call this a premium car just like I would not call Tesla a luxury car I don't know why journalists keep calling Tesla luxury car Tesla themselves they don't even call it luxury they just call it premium electro auto okay maybe in Germany at least but uh, yeah and I can show you guys here by the way when you go to the pitch dark the dark side wait maybe I should turn down this one uh, the, the headlights are really good oh man uh, uh, but they, okay, they are just static. They don't have any adaptive stuff. But they, are, for, for Chinese cars, they are really good. And you can see some of the ambient light here. Yeah, yeah. And then okay, use some auto steer. Oh shit! Oh no 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 no! Okay, okay. And then I haven't figured out how to turn off auto steer uh, completely. So I just press the park button. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can of course push the brake. Yeah. But um, yeah, so and now we got over to the pitch dark area again. Oh, yeah, oncoming car. Yeah, let me turn on this one. So um, yeah, but this is Mifa, you know, the Mifa 9 in Thailand is called, <laughs> it's funny, fun fact, in Thailand, they sell this one under the MG brand because it comes from Syke. Syke owns MG and also Maxus. So in Thailand, it's called MG Maxus 9. And here it's Mifa 9, yeah, and Mifa does, it's not MILF, no, it's, okay, you guys, eh, it should have been MILF, no, it's not MILF, MILF means mom, I like to, you know, 
but this is MIFA means what was again some advanced m m MPV I, I don't remember man it, was, it, it has it stands for something yeah but um, so w can I uh, would I recommend this car yeah I mean for, for people who are interested in it like I met some guys several people they were like oh Maxus oh I was, you know, they, they were interested in this car okay if you are interested in this car there must be a reason then I, I say you know try it you might like it or you might look at it but I, I wouldn't just say uh, swipe it off and say don't get this it's, it's, it's shit you know like I might say with some other Japanese cars or actually when it comes to the Unique 5 I trusted a long time ago that one I was like uh, why would you buy that car? It was over 400k and it was not good at all. At least here I found, found okay, it might not be perfect, but it has a lot of good stuff. You know, when you start looking, I found lots of good stuff here. So then it's worth uh, buying it. You just have to figure out what do you want and what do you not want. And I can't summarize everything in one video. But I'm trying to gather as much information as possible. But if you want more detail, you should look in the other videos, in the range test video and some of the other ones to find out more about this Moxus. But let me try now. So if I use cruise control. Oh, sorry, if I use auto steer, it will actually do a pretty good job uh, most of the time. I, I use, uh, well, actually, uh, in 1000 kilometer challenge, I didn't use. Um, that much auto stay because I was hammering it. <laughs> Busted! Oh, oh, how will it run over speed bumps on auto steer? Ooh, 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 not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, but anyway, maybe I should just end the video now because I tried to give you guys as much information as possible and I feel like I have told enough about this car. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, man, even now in the city, I, I'm struggling to get uh, an, e an even drive. Uh, I, yeah. Oh and, oh, and then comes the jolt again. No, 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 I didn't want that much power. No, no, okay, no. Uh, uh, yeah, but you know, uh, I feel like lots of the stuff here can be improved with software update. And all the bugs here and all the features and, you know, stuff like here. It can be fixed with, with software update. So, um... So that means that, okay, just put some Chinese or Indian programmers to do this work and then the car should be a lot better without having to re-engineer all the hardware behind it. So, yeah. Um, what else is, I'm, I'm trying to figure out now. Okay, uh, should I try some, no, okay, there, there's no, okay. I, I'm probably in the wrong place. I shouldn't be doing any crazy maneuvers around here. <laughs> Uh, I'll f eventually find an empty place I can do some crazy maneuvers, but you know, it's not a sports car. It's just more like a comfortable ride, but somehow it, it doesn't feel that much bolt as for example the EQS SUV. So they, they, the way, at least the way they tune it, I, I like it a lot. A lo why, why is it fogging suddenly? Must be temp. Oh. Also, when I want to see outside temperature, you don't see it here in the instrument cluster. You don't see it here in the main screen. You have to go to HVAC and here suddenly you see, and then this shit comes up every time. Okay, just don't use blinker. Like, come on, turn off that. Yeah, it's 11 degrees Celsius. Uh, maybe there was a temperature change something or the car auto uh, recirculate or yeah, I'm not sure. But you see that now it's starting to remove the... Wait, is it outside or inside? Oh, it's on outside. Yeah, this happens a lot nowadays. There's big temperature changes and then the windows outside fog. So that's not the car's fault. Yeah. So, um, yeah, overall, though, I'm quite happy with this car. Um, too bad I didn't have more time with it. I would like to go... <laughs> Actually, I suggested taking a trip with wifey to Nuibi, um, uh, uh, Sweden, you know, Harry Handel. But then she was like, ah, uh, yeah, and then she bailed out on me. So I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, okay, so, yeah. But it would be great, actually, uh, if I would go on a road trip, like I've done in the past, right, with the family or something like that, or at least the baby, and yeah, on the back, uh, this would be a pretty good choice. 
because it has so much space and he has the comfort and then just put wife in the back there in the in a super comfortable seat the, the business class seats and she would be one happy panda and then i'm like oh yeah so then i just have to deal with this shit with the front here with the lack of navigation and with the shop choppy <laughs> pedal and shit that i but uh, okay yeah wow wait seems like turning circle is also pretty good Hmm. And there's one thing I noticed, by the way, when you use this button here to turn on the heater for the rear, uh, yeah, the, the, I don't know, rear defroster, whatever it's called, right? And the side mirrors, because now the side mirrors, I'm not sure if you can see it, the side mirrors are slightly uh, fogged, but it, it melts it so fast. I just press the button now, wait a little bit. I, you might think it will take a couple of minutes. No. It comes so schnell. Wait. Okay, now that I'm gonna demonstrate, it doesn't. It doesn't come that fast. Um, oh, okay, maybe because this time there is actually a thicker layer there. Ah, ah, okay, okay, never mind. Okay, seems like now it actually it can take maybe a minute or two before it starts. Okay, okay, that that was the that was the thing. Okay, never mind then. Okay, so and also one other thing I like is that there is no power button. But um, that sometimes becomes troublesome because since there is no power button, when you stop the car and leave the car like this, then it shuts itself off. But if you, for some reason, want to go in the back and sit here, then everything is off heater cooling everything is off so the way you have to do it is that you have to come inside the car oh this is also uh, an annoyance which is, which is the you know the the easy entry it will slide back when you leave the car and then slide forward again um i haven't found out where the heck you turn off that feature because in general i don't like it in case there's something behind me there uh, but sometimes it doesn't slide forward so then i have to go here i have to go to home wait for the lag and then i go here driver's seat and then i do this seat memory and it re and then it goes forward um but you see <clears throat> if i want to keep the heater and stuff running now i have to leave the car you see that the seat slides backwards as if it detected that i was going to leave but then i don't close the door fully just kind of yeah like that no oh, shit i push it too far shit okay then i have to get back in again okay let's show you you have to not press it too far like this ish and now you can be in the back here and then everything is on so uh it would be great if <clears throat> there was a way to keep the car on like, a, I don't know, camp models or something like that. I mean, Chinese, they are pretty good at comping, right? So it would be great if there would be a way to keep the car on. For example, Neo does not have a power button either, but Neo is smart enough that once you power up the car and the heater and the music and everything is running, even when you go out of the car and you close the door, everything will be running until you lock the car. Then it shuts down. You know, I'm just saying there's a way to fix this. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff you can improve with this car with software updates. But um, yeah, okay. Um, oh, shit. Uh, wait, this is also weird because now the consumption number disappeared. I was going to tell you guys what the consumption was for this trip there. Okay, the consumption is 265 watt hour per kilometer. I'm not 100% sure if that is the correct consumption. It was when I did my own measurement on the 90 test and 120 test based on uh, the state of charge here um, I was getting higher consumption number so but it's roughly there you know so I mean it's not the worst but it's also not the best but for an for uh, something like this big uh, minivan then uh, my impression is that uh, the efficiency is fairly good yeah but anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.